be a man your feelings are for wussy. Stop trying to play the victim card. You are control of your own destiny, which I all agree with. But simultaneously, my parents don't believe in depression. With people that are depressed in the early days, I would be, come on, man, just think happy thoughts. That's what I literally, I'm the idiot who thought that. <laughs> and then after my last fight, I had like a two and a half month period of depression. Can internalize that stereotype and start to believe that we need to be perfect. Sometimes I think I'm worthless. I don't deserve anybody. I'm a failure. No one ever wants to be with me. I don't deserve anything, especially if it's good in my life. 41% of Asian Americans are currently experiencing anxiety or depression symptoms, and 62% of those diagnosed with mental health conditions need help accessing services. You know that being Asian, especially in an immigrant household, there is no such thing as mental health. In particular, we're the least likely demographic to seek mental health resources. What is that? We have to put a roof over your head and you do not want to burden us with the shame and guilt of mental illness. If you're completely healthy, you look physically fine, there's nothing for you to complain about. Her immigrant parents often juggled multiple jobs while raising her and her brother in Dorchester. Even when there was time to talk, they didn't talk about feelings. Mental health was definitely not at the top of the list. It was getting food on the table, making sure bills were paid, and making sure we could get to school on time. In 2020, an estimated 14.8 million U.S. adults aged 18 and older has experienced a depressive episode. But we all know there is no such thing as depression in Asian household. Uh, people who grew up in Chinese or in the Asian cultures, they may not develop um, uh, that uh, vocabulary to describe their uh, emotional experiences or feelings. Not only number one, you never ever talk about your feelings, but number two, mental health is so taboo, which is why I'm gonna reveal and expose the much as I possibly can, as well as reflect on my own mental health experience. I would assume a majority of kids that are born into this world as little cute and pure innocent babies, we aren't just necessarily clinically and biologically depressed. Most kids grow up full of joy and happiness. And it is only when we are unable to process certain events and stressors in our life in a healthy manner that is when these memories and these so-called trauma experiences affect us and start to rewire our brain in a way that it diludes our own self-worth. Than twice as likely to be diagnosed with mental health disorders than Asian Americans. And even among those diagnosed, whites were twice as likely to receive medication. Fon says a couple things account for this huge disparity. But never once. Is there ever a mention of happiness, fulfillment, and self-worth? You never hear about things like feelings, sadness. It's more along the lines of saving face. I will never show weakness to this day, never seen my own dad cry unless it's at the funeral or show any sort of emotions at all. So as a kid, you sort of mirror that. Asian Americans are the fastest growing minority group in the U.S. Despite that, they are largely underrepresented in the mental health care profession. What you learn as a kid is you just repress that ish, you know? You hold it all the way down because that is not okay. That is not accepted in an Asian household. So growing through childhood into adolescence, Things may have happened to you, horrible things, good things, but you don't learn to express it. And when you're a kid and you don't have the full maturation of your brain, you start putting this negative narrative in your head to each one of these traumatic experiences. Let's say, for example, you have a group of friends and that group of friends just suddenly disappears one day and you think that you don't deserve friends anymore because they all disappeared. But little did you know that it was because of the fact that you moved to a different school, 
you had to relearn that ability to socialize again. But instead, you put this negative narrative in your head where it's like, you look around, everyone has friends, I don't have friends, something must be wrong with me. On top of not having a safe space to communicate to your parents and understanding emotional processing, there is a term called filial piety. Essentially, there is this tremendous amount of guilt and respect that I have to give. They have given so much to me because they have, they have done everything and sacrificed everything so I can be okay. I do not ever want to put pain, burden, emotional burden onto them. You are essentially a Coke can, one shake away from just Notice that Asian Americans rarely present to the outpatient setting uh, to seek um, mental health care. It was more common to find them in the emergency room. And that's where a lot of kids around 19 and 20 go through things like panic attacks, ending up in the emergency room because you think you're going to die. Having so much anxiety and worry and you don't even know what to do about it where your brain just ruminates so much to the point where you're like I'm feeling anxious nauseous. I feel like I'm gonna faint and fall down. What is going on? And it finally takes you a mental breakdown Ending up being in the hospital having a girlfriend manipulate you and use you to the point where you just wake up one day and you're like what is the meaning of everything? What's the point of it all? Why am I the way that I am? People who aren't depressed, it's easy to look at someone and be like, hey man, snap out of it. You got this, keep on going. But if you could actually feel what depression feels like, imagine yourself laying on your bed, right? You have a thousand pound foot of a giant on your chest. You have no motivation to do anything. All you want to do is sleep because that is the only time where you can hopefully not feel that pain. I was depressed in the early days, I would be, come on, man, just think happy thoughts. That's what I literally, I'm the idiot who thought that. <laughs> and then after my last fight, I had like a two and a half month period of depression. The most scariest thing I've Which ever fight? Heard. Those circuits are present in all people, but for certain people that are experiencing major depression and are really in the depths of their, of their depression, they can't really access those circuits in the same way that people who are not suffering from depression can. Cool story, bro. Feelings, huh? You're weak. This is some uh, pussy ass shit, man. What is this, man? What is this, man? You gotta, you gotta man up. You gotta go through it. You ain't, you ain't it, man. You ain't it. To be a man, it's not necessarily to repress and not feel anything. Actually, the more masculine thing to do is being having the capabilities to feel your emotions and process it in a healthy way so you do not one repress it and let it bottle up and also explode everywhere and two be able to see things in an objective and clear manner are you getting proper sleep is your diet on point is there fitness routine within your own lifestyle are you active? And from there, you can figure out what is it that you really want in this life? And if you figured out what you want in this life, are you doing something the complete opposite? Meaning that there isn't sense of congruency. For example, all I want to do is to be an artist. But at the same time, I am a construction worker. And I'm leaning towards this, but deep down in my heart, I want to be an artist full time. Can you see that sort of contrast can lead to inner turmoil? Because you are not living the life that you deserve to live, or at least aspire for that life, because you didn't have the confidence to have that within yourself. There are things like removing out negative people, and the more inner work and reflection that you do, you can actually start to realize, wait, I can spend less time with this sort of people and I should be around more of this type of people. And ultimately, no matter where you are in life, you have a shot of recreating your own reality. But it is always, always easier said 
than done. And as someone who's gone through ups and downs on this lonely journey of mine, I was able to document it on this YouTube channel. And I hope whoever's watching this, that it reaches the right person. Because I know how lonely it can feel, especially as you're going through this journey of reflection and mental health. You look around the world and you're like, wow, everyone seems to have it together. No, everyone is just pretending to have it, to seem like they have it together. Wait another day. Tomorrow's another day. The sun rises. Get back to the drawing board. And really, really have that honest talk with yourself and be like, am I truly being the most authentic me that I can be? Or am I just living to try to pretend to be like someone that I'm not.